is in this video, I will learn how we can use the trigger and gate function in live view. In the ideal case, we'll use a DAC assistant for our input signal, but here we'll use a simulate signal function. We'll use a square wave, the second option in the list to simulate the signal. And then we'll use the trigger and gate function, but at the same time using this bar, we can change the amplitude, which will be easier to change the amplitude using the sliding bar rather than every time we go to the function itself. The trigger and gate function, if we see inside, uh, we see the threshold is set at 10 when it starts to sense rising. So if we have a signal and then if it sense start to like go up and then as soon as it reaches to 10, the trigger will activate and the default trigger channel is zero and we can set how many pre-sample that we want to save before the trigger is activated. So 10 sample before it reaches to 10. And for the stop trigger function, we say like the number of sample is 1000. That's a default option. So it will save 1000 data after it, the trigger is activated and then the pre-sample 10. So 1010, that's a default setting, uh, the 1000 sample for the stop trigger. So we use the collector function to save and write to measurement file to save the data. So now if we run this VI, we'll see what happened, like how we can use this trigger and gate function from the simulated signal. So now we run this and we can use this slide bar to change the amplitude of the frequency. So now you see we have the output signal and we change the amplitude and we can see the output signal, but there is no triggered function in the output signal two window. That's a bottom one. And if we go up slightly, we'll see how it changes the amplitude. So if we slightly go up or down, we see we have not activated the trigger. And as soon as we go, to 10, the trigger will be activated. We can also type in the data in the box, the white box below. If we press enter, see now the trigger is activated because we reaches to the trigger threshold and we see it save it, it every time it sends 10. So it save 1000 data point and then stop the trigger and then go back and it sees it trigger is activated. Now, if you go up, you see the trigger is still activated. So it saves that 1000 data point each loop and then it save and then again, it, the trigger is activated and then again, save 1000 data point. And if you go down and uh, the trigger is deactivated now, you see, so it stopped after the trigger is activated. So you'll see some of the data is uh, close uh, to like less than 10. Again, if we activate, the same thing happen. And go down, the trigger is stop at that one, 1 1.6 seconds. So this way we can control the signal and using a function like this, we can say uh, the, the specific range of signal that we want to see or save rather than saving everything.